Sri Aurobindo's Savitri, a legend and a symbol. Book Two, the Book of the Traveller of the Worlds. Canto Twelve, the Heavens of the Ideal. Always the ideal beckoned from afar, awakened by the touch of the unseen. Deserting the boundary of things achieved, aspired the strong discoverer, tireless thought, revealing at each step a luminous world. It left known summits for the unknown peaks. Impassioned, it sought the lone, unrealized truth. It longed for the light that knows not death and birth. Each stage of the soul's remote ascent was built into a constant heaven felt always here. At each pace of the journey marvellous, a new degree of wonder and of bliss, a new rung formed in being's mighty stair, a great wide step trembling with jewelled fire, as if a burning spirit quivered there, Upholding with his flame the immortal hope, as if a radiant God had given his soul that he might feel the tread of pilgrim feet mounting in haste to the Eternal's house. At either end of each effulgent stair, the heavens of the ideal mind were seen in a blue, lucent sea of dreaming space like strips of brilliant sky clinging to the moon. On one side glimmered hue on floating hue, a glory of sunrise breaking on the soul, in a tremulous rapture of the heart's insight and the spontaneous bliss that beauty gives the lovely kingdoms of the deathless rose. Above the spirit, cased in mortal sense, are superconscious realms of heavenly peace. Below, the inconscient, sullen, dim abyss. Between, behind our life, the deathless rose. Across the covert air, the spirit breeds a body of the cosmic beauty and joy, unseen, unguessed by the blind, suffering world. Climbing from nature's deep, surrendered heart, it blooms forever at the feet of God, fed by life's sacrificial mysteries. Here too its bud is born in human breasts. Then, by a touch, a presence or a voice, the world is turned into a temple ground and all discloses the unknown beloved. In an outburst of heavenly joy and ease, life yields to the divinity within and gives the rapture offering of its all and the soul opens to felicity. A bliss is felt that never can wholly cease. A sudden mystery of secret grace flowers goldening our earth of red desire. All the high gods who hid their visages from the soiled, passionate ritual of our hopes reveal their names and their undying powers. A fiery stillness wakes the slumbering cells, a passion of the flesh becoming spirit, and marvellously is fulfilled at last the miracle for which our life was made. A flame in a white voiceless cupola is seen, and faces of immortal light, the radiant limbs that know not birth and death, the breasts that suckle the firstborn of the sun, the wings that crowd thoughts ardent silences, the eyes that look into spiritual space. Our hidden centres of celestial force open like flowers to a heavenly atmosphere. Mind pauses, thrilled with the supernal ray. And even this transient body then can feel 
ideal love and flawless happiness, and laughter of the heart's sweetness and delight, freed from the rude and tragic hold of time, and beauty and the rhythmic feet of the hours. This, in high realms, touches immortal kind. What here is in the bud has blossomed there. There is the secrecy of the house of flame, the blaze of godlike thought and golden bliss, the rapt idealism of heavenly sense. There are the wonderful voices, the sun laugh, a gurgling eddy in rivers of God's joy, and the mysteried vineyards of the gold moon wine, all the fire and sweetness of which hardly here a brilliant shadow visits mortal life. Although are witnessed there the joys of time, pressed on the bosom, the immortal's touch is felt, heard are the flutings of the infinite. Here upon earth are early awakenings, moments that tremble in an air divine, and groan upon the yearning of her soil, time's sunflowers gaze at gold eternity. There are the imperishable beatitudes. A million lotuses swaying on one stem, world after coloured and ecstatic world, climbs towards some far unseen epiphany. On the other side of the eternal stairs, the mighty kingdoms of the deathless flame aspire to reach the being's absolutes. Out of the sorrow and darkness of the world, out of the depths where life and thought are tombed, lonely mounts up to heaven the deathless flame. In a veiled nature's hallowed secrecies, it burns forever on the altar mind. Its priests, the souls of dedicated gods, humanity, its house of sacrifice. Once kindled, never can its flaming cease. A fire along the mystic parts of earth, it rises through the mortal's hemisphere, till, born by runners of the day and dusk, it enters the occult eternal light and clambers, whitening to the invisible throne. Its worlds are steps of an ascending force, a dream of giant contours, titan lines, homes of unfallen and illumined might, heavens of unchanging good, pure and unborn, heights of the grandeur of truth's ageless ray, as in a single sky they start to view and call our souls into a vast air. On their summits they bear up the sleepless flame, dreaming of a mysterious beyond, transcendent of the parts of fate and time. They point above themselves with index peaks through a pale sapphire ether of God-mind towards some gold infinite's apocalypse. A thunder rolling mid the hills of God, tireless, severe, is their tremendous voice. Exceeding us, to exceed ourselves, they call, and bid us rise incessantly above. Far from our eager reach, those summits live, too lofty for our mortal strength and height. Hardly in a dire ecstasy of toil, climbed by the spirit's naked athlete will, Austere, intolerant, they claim from us efforts too lasting for our mortal nerve. Our hearts cannot cleave to, nor our flesh support. Only the eternal strength in us can dare to attempt the immense adventure of that climb and the sacrifice of all we cherish here. Our human knowledge is a candle, burnt on a dim altar to a sun-vast truth. Man's virtue, a coarse-spun, ill-fitting dress, apparels wooden images of good. Passionate and blinded, bleeding, stained with mire, his energy stumbles towards a deathless force. An imperfection dogs our highest strength, portions and pale reflections 
are our share. Happy the worlds that have not felt our fall, where will is one with truth and good with power, impoverished not by earth mind's indigence. They keep God's natural breath of mightiness, his bare spontaneous swift intensities. There is his great transparent mirror, self, and there his sovereign autarky of bliss in which immortal natures have their part, heirs and co-sharers of divinity. He through the ideal's kingdoms moved at will, accepted their beauty and their greatness bore, partook of the glories of their wonder fields, but passed, nor stayed beneath their splendour's rule. All there was an intense but partial light. In each a seraph-winged, high-browed idea united all knowledge by one master thought, persuaded all action to one golden sense, all powers subjected to a single power, and made a world where it could reign alone, an absolute ideal's perfect home. Insignia of their victory and their faith, they offered to the traveller at their gates a quenchless flame or an unfading flower, emblem of a high kingdom's privilege. A glorious shining angel of the way presented to the seeking of the soul the sweetness and the might of an idea, each deemed truth's intimate fount and summit force, the heart of the meaning of the universe, perfection's key, passport to paradise. Yet were there regions where these absolutes met and made a circle of bliss with married hands. Light stood embraced by light, fire wedded fire. But none in the other would his body lose to find his soul in the world's single soul, a multiplied rapture of infinity. Onward he passed to a diviner sphere. There, joined in a common greatness, light and bliss, all high and beautiful and desirable powers, forgetting their difference and their separate reign, become a single, multitudinous whole. Above the parting of the roads of time, above the silence and its thousandfold word, in the immutable and inviolate truth, forever united and inseparable, the radiant children of eternity dwell on the wide spirit height where all are one. End of Canto 12